Hi everyone, so welcome to another academic video. This week we are back into the land of university research and that exciting moment when your journal paper is accepted. And in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about what happens next and as researching academics, maybe some things that we should be doing <laughs> once our journal papers are accepted. Hey, so welcome. If you're new to the channel, I'm Caroline. I'm a university physics lecturer. Getting your journal paper accepted, I think, is always a really proud and highlighting moment of, of any academic journey. Um, and I remember particularly as a student, when you get that first paper, first author published, it's really, really huge. So as I've gone through my career, any time a journal paper has been accepted, or I'm maybe the first author, or I'm the supervising author on it, it's always exciting. Um, so there's a few practicalities that then happen. So once your journal paper is accepted, it's then going to move into the process that takes it from an accepted journal paper into the final finished published paper. Now, of course, in academia, different journals, you know, different subject research areas will have slightly different processes. But in general, once your paper has been accepted, it's going to move through a period of being typeset, so laid out properly into the style that the, that the journal wants. It's going to have maybe the figures, you might need some extra figure information to help them process the paper. Um, you might need to revisit the language in some cases. There's usually a point where you have to discuss the copyright. So you might have to sign some copyright transfer forms. You might have to sign a disclaimer about the funding or, or any competing interests in the work. Um, and at some point it's going to land up as a proof and you will get sent this proof and it's your chance again to look through your paper and just make sure that you're happy with everything that the journal has done to get your paper ready to be then published in their final journal. Other things you might have to think about is the finance of that particular paper. So depending on which journal you've gone for, and I think I did a past video about, you know, paying to put your journal work forward or going into a journal where you don't need to pay to have your submission. But depending on which route you've taken, you may be asked, do you want to pay for a colour version to be published? Or do you want the colour version of your publication to only be available online? Are you happy with having grayscale format? Um, little things like that go through in this stage. And then you will end up with this final proof. Yourself and your other co-authors will check it. And then you get that exciting moment when your work is published. And that is a brilliant feeling to know that your research that you spent ages working on or that your student team worked on really well has made it out into the academic community. And I think it's that point where as researchers, there's probably a few things that we maybe should do just to help ensure our work gets the visibility that it deserves. One of the first things, and one of the most important things I think, is to claim that research as being associated with yourself. You know, when you, you publish, you're publishing under your name and you want to make sure that these publications are linked to your research record. Um, and here in the UK, the thing that we do is, I think it's ORCID or O-R-C-I-D, we all have, as academic researchers, these unique identification numbers. So I have a unique identification number that links me to any research output that I am an author or co-author on. So it's really important to make sure that your newly published paper, that that research identifying number is linked to that paper. Because that then means that when people search for your work and search for your name, that research output is going to pop up in their search history. And then once you've claimed the authorship of this particular document, and again, if you're working with students or with other researchers, you know, also encourage them <laughs> to make sure that they're claiming own their ownership as well. Once you've done that bit, the next thing to think about is how that research is going to be shared. 
Um, this is particularly important, I think, if you are the lead author on a paper. So if you did the, the responsibility really of writing and completing the work. And also if you are the principal investigator, you know, if you put forward an idea and maybe you're the last name appearing on the paper um, and it was kind of a, a research area that you are particularly interested in or have won funding for or are motivated to keep studying. Because once that paper is released, you want to make sure that the right people get access to see that paper so that it is known within your, your research community. And there is various ways <laughs> that we can share our research, you know, from just sharing it within your departmental group. You know, maybe you have a notice board or maybe you have like an electronic notice board within your department that you can share outputs of new research. Maybe your department is very kind of tweet and Twitter centric. So maybe you tweet about new research outputs. Um, I can think that's particularly useful as well if you're introducing a new academic into the community. So especially if you are like the first author for the first time on a subject, that can be quite a, a useful way of getting your name linked to that subject. You may then want to be discussing your work at conferences. And of course, you have that balance between needing to show something new at a conference, uh, depending on what you've published. But conferences are a great way to obviously mention these publications and, and your key results and key outputs. There's all sorts of research engines. Um, ResearchGate is quite a common one where people highlight and share their research outputs. And of course, you can step outside of your traditional research area. So maybe you want to share it in more of a, a public format. So a few years ago, I, I tried <laughs> stand up comedy. Yes, it was interesting. I tried it three times. Um, that's a different story for a different day. But part of my stand up routine actually touched on research that I've been involved in and had been published. So there are all sorts of ways to get your research out into the community. Um, so when you've published your paper, don't necessarily think that's it, I'm done and dusted. Make sure you've claimed it and then make sure you're considering if and how you want to promote and share those research outputs. And the final thing, and I've noticed that journals are now encouraging people to consider this, is when you've released an output, to think about tracking it. Um, so to look at the metrics, you know, set up your account so that if people cite your research, you get an indication that your research maybe has been used by somebody else or has been referenced by somebody else or, or maybe even just read and commented on by somebody else. Um, because then you're able to kind of see, I guess, the reach of your research, you know, which other universities, departments, industries are interested in what you're doing. Are they engaging with your work? Um, are their comments maybe complementary or crit critical? You know, are you going to be able to use that kind of insight that these people are giving to you? Are you going to be able to maybe collaborate with any person in the future? So actually that kind of tracking of your your science, I'll say scientific because I'm a scientist, that tracking of your, your research output, I think is a useful thing and possibly, well, it's something that I definitely probably should do more of. You know, I think it's quite easy to get that paper out there, to make sure people are aware of the visibility um, and then to be on to the next part of your research uh, and not keeping an eye on the metrics on that piece of work. So yes, this year I'm gonna make more of an effort to track my research as well as sharing it and of course claiming it. But if you just had your first paper published or a recent piece of work published, congratulations, you know, it is no trivial task to get through peer review and to get work out into the open community. So many congratulations if you've never done it before or maybe you're in that stage where work is being critiqued by reviewers or maybe you're having to move from journal to journal to journal. Persevere is one of those things in academia where when it gets published, it's wonderful, but I've had moments and papers where I've submitted them and they've had to go between journals or had revisions or been tweaked. Um, and in part, that's what makes academia so good is our, our, peer review, our peer review process. And in part, I think obviously that makes academia frustrating at times as well when you just want your research to be released. Um, but yeah, 
all the best for any research outputs that you've got coming out. As I said, on this channel, well, I didn't say it in this video, on this channel, we are all about academic life. So some videos are focused on teaching, some are focused on research, some are focused on day-to-day -day and the admin life of a, of a university academic. So this one is a research video, so I will tag it university research to make it easier to find on the channel. But thank you so much for joining us. Please do leave me a comment. You know, are you almost at the finishing stage of the journal paper? Are you a bit nervous about writing your, your journal publication up? Let me know in the comments and I will see you next Monday for another academic video. Bye.